my name is Min Lee, and my position at the, my company is uh, I'm kind of like the head development for a, a new project uh, being developed at Pro Abyss. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're here at GDC. Uh, this is the first time in, how, how long has it been since you've been to a GDC? Uh, well, it's been a while. Actually, the last one I went to was in uh, 2006. Eight, 2009. So it's good. it's been like <laughs> almost ten years. Seven year, yeah, seven or eight years. Okay, wow. And that was actually for a previous project that I work on uh, called Tactical Intervention, which didn't turn out so well, actually. <laughs> but, oh uh, no. I mean, I'm, I, I'll talk about it if you, want, <laughs> if you want. I'm not embarrassed about it. But yeah, sure. I mean, uh, if you want, I can talk about that. But <laughs> that was it was a good it was an interesting experience for me, and uh, um, I, I learned a lot from that and. You know, I got a chance to work with some pretty uh, passionate people, but unfortunately, it was that project kind of failed because we, we kind of we bit off more than we can chew. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was we were just we were just too small, and we had trouble uh, basically just growing uh, and, and just uh, as a company growing basically. And so, yeah, it just the project itself was just doomed to fail. Oh, mm -hmm. so let's talk about something that wasn't doomed to fail. What brought you back here this year uh, to GDC? Oh, okay, so yeah, so I joined Pearl Abyss uh, about a year ago now. And um, so uh, they, they, they hired me to work on a new project that's kind of, it's based on, uh, it's an FPS, it's a shooting game. So they, they kind of have a, a lot of um, uh, uh, kind of, they admired my work on previous uh, shooting games like Counter-Strike and some. So they were big fans of, of uh, my work on those games, and they wanted to get my expertise on, on their new project. So, so, so I joined Pearl Abyss to, to do just that, and uh, my position there is basically to just kind of oversee this new project and just kind of uh, help kind of get the shooting mechanics right. And so, so yeah, that's been uh, what I've been doing at, at Pearl Abyss for the past year, just working on this new project that, unfortunately, I can't really say much about, but I, I can say that it involves shooting. And uh, it's it's going to be a shooter. Um, that's, that's cool. Um, I kind of want to talk to you about just the state of shooters right now. Yeah, sure. Because you know you, you're 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 from the old school yeah. of FPS devs. You know, yeah. very much. That, I've been around for a while. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and things are different right now. Yeah. There's yeah, a they, new there's a new paradigm evolved. with battle royale. Yeah. 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 Uh, it almost feels like when deathmatch was invented. Mm -hmm. It's that with transformative. Quake, right. Yeah, yeah, you know, like 20 years ago, we had Quake and we had Unreal and we had like Doom. And, you know, eventually we started getting, uh, the, the, the FPS genre started to get more granular, you know. Then Counter-Strike came along and, you know, the, the player base started to split up. You know, we started getting like, the, we still had the people that played Deathmatch, but then people started playing Counter-Strike. So we had this kind of eSports thing where people would, would play like games that were focused on like uh, competitive esports. And now like now we've got games like PUBG, like Battle Royale style games. So, you know, the, the FPS genre has even splintered even further. So, you know, we've got like uh, even more like subcategories of, 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 of uh, FPS type games, you know. So we, we still have the Call of Duty uh, uh, players and we still have the Battlefield players and we still have the uh, Counter-Strike players, but now we've got this new subset of players like that love battle royale. So, so I, I see, I sort of see the splintering of of, of of the player base just kind of falling into their own kind of like uh, play style, you know. And it's happening at a time where these games, especially these battle royale games, right? Fortnite, uh, yeah. Apex Legends, not Apex Legends, but Fortnite, and PUBG. Mm -hmm. They're both available on mobile devices. Yeah. So they've made this huge leap and I know we, we've seen rage in the past other games in the past may be ported to mobile but mm -hmm. the the ability to play cross play with mobile devices I think is this huge paradigm shift for yeah. online multiplayer right yeah uh, but are they able uh, when you say cross play they're not able to play with the PC uh, player base no 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 they keep not. them, they it's, keep it's, them yeah, it's just totally separate because I, I mean it, it would uh, yeah for do you sure remember it would those be days completely unbalanced yeah quake 3 was on uh, Dreamcast and yeah they had cross play with yeah it was terrible man like <laughs> and like Xbox tried to cross play with PC, yeah. yeah, I mean, like they just get, they get the, the, you know, they wipe the floor off, like yeah, yeah, and like you know, I mean, I, I see Sony, they're trying to promote like crossplay or and and Microsoft as mm -hmm. well, you know, in, in their future products, and I'm still kind of skeptical how that's gonna play out because you know, you, it's a huge like discrepancy in skill between PC players and console players. I mm -hmm. mean, that's just, it's a matter of fact, you can't really deny that. Yeah, because I've played Rainbow Six on uh, PS4, and I also play it on the PC. And you know when I switch over from there, from the not mouse and the keyboard to the gamepad, my skills just go like this. You know, I, I can't. My, my kill death ratio is just balloons. 
And yeah, when you look at the it's a huge difference. Yeah. And when you look at the professional scene for FPS, yeah, it's still keyboard and mouse. Oh yeah, for sure. Because yeah. everyone wants that yeah. precision and that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, when I play uh, on the PS4, you, you know, as I said, I even play a lot of pro guys, you know, who who play with the gamepad as well, and they're, you know, they're just not as good as the guys who play on the with uh, with the mouse and. Yeah, you mentioned yeah, so. something about so, the uh, yeah, splintering. So, yeah, cross-plays, it's, yeah. it's difficult. He's mentioned something about the splintering of FPS that mm -hmm. I thought was interesting. Yeah. You, you really cited Counter-Strike as one of those moments. The bomb planted, right, bomb diffused, that mechanic. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that aha moment like? And how did you did you know at that moment that you had created something that was 20 years later was still <laughs> going to be played for hundreds yeah. of thousands of dollars in arenas. Did you like <laughs> the, the, that that like germ of an idea? Yeah, it, it's weird. No, you, you know, because when I originally came up with Counter Strike, the first mode that we had was hostage rescue, and that was kind of my first uh, motivation to make Counter Strike because counter terrorism actually the majority of counter terrorist operations they're really about hostage rescue. You don't really see bomb. you know you, you never see in real life people terrorists planting bombs like that, right? Yeah. And they're not going to stick around, right? That's stupid, right? In real life that whole bomb scenario came out because um, you know it's weird. We just came up with that scenario because we knew terrorists use bombs, but they use them in, in, in a, like in mostly about car bombings and that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. So we, when we came up with the, the, the idea of the, the, the bomb scenario, we, we had to make it balanced so the terrorists wouldn't just plant it and run away, you know. So it was kind of, uh, it was difficult to, to, to get that, that balance right in, in having it, you know, they had to plan it and they had like 30 seconds. So um, yeah, we never, we never imagined that it would really become the de facto gameplay of Counter-Strike because these days when you play Counter-Strike, it's 90% gonna be bomb mode, right? I'm kind of curious, uh, what did you think was going to be the big breadwinner for, for Counter-Strike? Counter well, I, I, honestly, I hoped it would be Hostage Rescue, but in, unfortunately, Hostage Rescue was just too hard to balance. It was just way too... Um, it just it was hard to balance the maps, and it was hard to balance just the gameplay of, of Hostage Rescue, because it's just too biased for the, the terrorists, because they yeah. have such so much of an advantage. So it was very difficult for us to, to just make it so, uh, you know, it was just you know, on par with the counter terrorists. So in the end, that's kind of why uh, the bomb defusal just became much more uh, 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 friendly for esports because it was just uh, it was just one of those 50-50 game modes that just worked out in the end. And yeah.